look at Mark Fidrich. Now, each time he gets the ball back, you'll see him mumble a couple of words to the ball. The first man ever to pitch five career no-hitters. Touch him all, Joe! I don't believe what I just saw! And it's another chance for Mitchell, and he makes a bare-handed catch! Ricky goes, a pitch ticket, he's gonna have it! Leaps high in the air, and he's got it! An incredible catch by the kid! And let it be said that number eight, Cal Ripken Jr. has reached the unreachable star. The fine art of fielding a baseball. Sometimes they catch it. Swing and a one-hop shot. Diving play by Ozzy. Long throw, you wouldn't believe it. Sometimes they drop it. It is off his head and over the top. This Week in Baseball celebrates its 20th season with unforgettable great plays and bloopers. This is baseball, Major League Baseball. And this is Mel Allen. This is how we looked 20 years ago when This Week in Baseball made its debut. Where were you 20 years ago? 20 years ago, I think I started to watch This Week in Baseball. Watching you guys every Saturday. Watching Twib. Seeing Ozzie Smith make a great play or Alan Trammell or something like that. Listening to Mel Allen. I didn't miss it. I could do a Mel Allen imitation. President trying to get it. Man alive, how about that? Great plays and bloopers quickly became our trademark. So get ready for the most unforgettable from 20 years of This Week in Baseball. But although we're anxious for the action to begin, things often come up that make this impossible. Unforeseen delays. Those little and big things that make patience a virtue. We have time called because a clown has been locked onto the field. <laughs> this is not a part of the act either, folks. <laughs> there we go. Foul to the screen and the sprinklers come on here. <laughs> He scratched the attendant. And finally, another attendant picks it up, and the attendant that got scratched just... Oh, he's just, in pain. Look at that, him. Boy, that cat is mad. Oh, baby. Of him. Tough little guy. Ferocious cats, relentless gnats. Most anything can stifle bats. Tough to hit when everything around you is going... Pss, 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 pss. Who would have ever thought a game would be delayed due to bugs? How do you get the attention of Mike Sims? Simple. Put a bug in his ear. What in the world happened to Mike Sims? Maybe a bug flew in. <laughs> Sims looks like he's hurting a little bit. He really does. It's a it bug. was a bug. Well, we've seen it all now. I'll tell you what. <laughs> it's a live moth. What's the matter with Johnson? He's got a toothache or something. Wait a minute. He lost a tooth. He lost a tooth. This. The legend of Randy Johnson. He grows. throws so hard that his teeth out. <laughs> oh, that hurts, doesn't it? Well, quit doing it then. Still watching? Good. Tommy Lasorda has caused a few delays in his time, and so it turns out have his players. Oh, let's go. Santiago let's and the go. plate umpire Joe West waiting for him. And West is saying, throw the ball. So Joe's putting a little heat on Mondesi. Look at this. How do you like that? Strike. And he hadn't come up to the plate yet. In this game, players very quickly learned their lesson. Carr fouled out in the first inning, and he had better get up there. Yeah, look at that look. <laughs> and Chuck Carr, the big grin, saying, I'm coming, I'm coming. But enough delays. Let's play ball. And as we've seen throughout the years, nobody plays it any better than the lords of the infield, the gloved ones, featuring some of the greatest infield plays in 20 years of TWIP. Look at this. It is home by Bordick.
second, on to first, what a play! Sharply in toward the hole, Fernandez, the off-balance slow, they got him. Number down the third baseline, backhander by Paz, he goes to Strange and throw the first in time. Messina backhands, throws, got him! The ball bounced toward the middle. Schofield reaches it, makes it behind the back. Flip, they get the force through the first. It's in time! We all know that imitation is flattering, sincerely, and baseball is no different. Vanna could not make the trip tonight, so please welcome our hostess, Mike Vanna Smithson. Here she is, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, Bo knows no equal. How could anyone dare emulate the man of many skills? Well, we had utility man Bill Pakoda give it a shot. Pakoda knows pine tar. Pakoda knows bubble gum. Pakoda knows water fountains. <laughs> Dakota knows everything. It seems everybody wants to be a star, and even the stars sometimes want to be other stars. I love you, man, and I mean that. Well, close me down. <laughs> Frank Pulley, he's another one of my Frank favorites. Frank Pulley? He's kind of like the Rocky of the Empires. He'll be behind the plate and he'll go, <laughs> Pop them up! Can you believe it? The, the big screen out there, and the train comes on. Starts getting our hitters going, you know, choo, 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 choo. And then I'll kind of sit in the dugout, and as soon as the train whistle gets ready to go, I'll kind of lean back and go, Yeah! <laughs> oh, yeah! Oh, Cubic! I'm out here now. Oh, yeah, Al. Al Troutwick, you know, brother! You know, Tony, we've been going home at night, but our man, Al, he, <laughs> he's been hitting the yes. gym. Yes. He's been out all night long oh, hitting the jumper. Yes. He's shooting free throws. He's jumping rope, Tony. He's, He's taking his vitamins. He's oh, saying his prayers, oh, brother. Yeah, Tony. Tony, what are you going to do when the 14-inch pythons are wrapped around you? Since players seem to get their kicks by being someone else, we've sought to strip the uniform from these guys and track down what really makes them tick. We did this by asking them very innocent questions, layups. And since the questions span 20 years, we've got a lot to chew on. Right now, I'm, I'm a big Christopher Cross fan. I'm a big Blondie fan. I like disco. I like rock. You know, I like, uh, I like John Lennon. You know, I like John Lennon. He's pretty good. And uh, I like Paul McCartney, uh, Maxine Nightingale. I like, you know, I like a lot of them. Grew up with Bruce Springsteen. Boy, George might even be all right. I guess I got to go along with a clean living guy like Lionel Richie. Frank Sinatra. David Bowie. Frank Sinatra. Motley Crue. <laughs> if I had my fantasy, I'd like to be Huey Lewis. Kind of like the way Neil Diamond sings. Billy Ocean. Grover Washington Jr. I wouldn't mind being Billy Joel right now. I think that would be nice. Yeah. The very first job I ever had was pumping gas. I, uh, I made about three fifty an hour, and I was cleaning crawfish at home. I know I worked in a Kentucky Fried Chicken when I was uh, when I was in high school. 
Um, you know, that's how I paid for my prom and everything. My first paying job was I was a visitor's clubhouse uh, kid with uh, my brother Fred. Uh, we took on the job together. Uh, we shined shoes, we hung up uniforms, we washed clothes. Uh, we took care of all the players. Uh, needs. We ran to the concession stand for hot dogs and popcorn. That was the first time I had a little bit of money in my pocket, a little bit of money in the bank. I think I'd like to be Johnny Olsen on The Price is Right, because I've always wanted to say, come on down. I'd just like to appear on Dynasty one time so I could slap Joan Collins. If I could cut my hair like uh, Mr. T and uh, put on all the, the gold necklaces and the rings and the, you know, the bracelets, I feel that I can do just as good a job as he can. I'd like to be Magnum. He gets all the girls, he's in Hawaii, he's driving around a Ferrari. Seems they're having a lot of fun, that'd be great. I'd like to be Richard Dawson of Family Foods. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just great when you can go around and kiss any young lady and not be, be rejected. See, I get rejected a lot when I try to kiss on women. Dr. J in basketball. Rodney Dangerfield for one day. San Diego chicken. <laughs> I'd like to be a dog. President of the United States. So probably a bag boy at Super Value. A gospel senior. Probably an actor. I mean, I've got the looks of Robert Redford, right? And David Hulse starred in that famous twin sequel, Angels in the Dugout. He gets fisted and fights it off toward the Angel Dugout. I think he's decided he's headed for the ninth. Yeah, he's gone. See you guys. <laughs> Again, slapped that way. Same spot. Uh oh. You've been your holster now, buddy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> hey, with the O2 pitch, same spot almost. That's it. How about one more? <laughs> we we'll get uh, two or three of them just a little harder. It's still all in two. <laughs> oh, he, threw it, he threw it harder and he just got it in his hand. Can't help but laugh about something like that. <laughs> There's one between the white lines. Lisa Arsena throws out David Holt. <laughs> <laughs> There's the butt. That could be trouble as Petrie. No, Stevie dives in and beats it. Good effort by Steve Lyons. And that'll be a base hit right there. Good job. I'll tell you one thing, not a bad defensive play either by the Tigers. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. He's going to get the dirt out, and all of a sudden he unbuckled his pants and they fell down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> One of the face is that same color as the bill of that cap right now. <laughs> well, as you can see, baseball is often confusing. He thought the ball at his feet was the ball in play. Was the ball in play, and he slapped his own glove thinking he had missed the catch when in essence he had it. That is weird. That is a very weird play. But then, baseball has a way of making any situation as embarrassing as one, two, two. Five ball to left. Buck is back. Back. Makes the play. Bobby's going to go all the way. Buck, I think, lost track of the outs, and the Pirates are tied again. Scott Buck held the ball on the warning track, and Bonilla was going to move up. Dean Lamont saw that and said, come on, let's go. There goes Mosby. Picked a good pitch to go on. Terrible throw. Mosby doesn't know where the throw is. He's going back to first base. <laughs> is he going to steal first? He steals he's first. Like now he's going to steal second again. I've never seen it before. <laughs> Where's Evan Costello when you need him? <laughs> Stillwell goes after the first one, and it's a lazy fly ball for Claudel Washington. So Finley gets out of the situation. And confusion on the field is not a lot of the Angels knew there were two outs. But a Washington at least felt that there was only one out. Orozco came in and finished out the ball game. A little shaky. Didn't get a save because of the rules. He did not. Ha he did not pitch three innings, and he came in with uh, out the uh, 
the on-deck batter being a batter that he would face uh, in his next uh, approach to pitching to the hitters. Bob Engel thinks it's strike three. Robert, you're thinking about that favorite restaurant. The count is three and two. Houston players are leaving the field. The count should be three and two. Bob Engel embarrassed this time. He's trying to keep from laughing and smiling. The most decisive second strike ever called. Well, not even umpires are perfect. But over the past 20 years, TWIB has featured a number of pitchers with seemingly perfect control. And then there are those pitchers who seem out of control. The madmen of the mound, for whom every base runner is potential danger, and any possible pitch an imperfect stranger. It's important that a pitcher and catcher always agree. Sometimes catchers forget that they're the catcher. There are times it doesn't matter. Like when you're catching a knuckleball, a la Gino Petrali, and his record six passed balls in one game. The Tigers are finding out that on some days against the knuckleball, you don't have to swing the bat to score runs. <laughs> It could make no difference how bad you pitch. Bats in the Belfry? No, bats in the Falls way. The 1993 All-Star Game was a classic case of predator and prey. Randy Johnson was the hunter, and it was John Crook who preyed. When I stepped in the box, I said, all I want to do is make contact. And after first pitch, I said, all I want to do is live. And I lived. So I had a good at-bat. Pitchers generally have no problem throwing the ball. But when they're on the receiving end, look out. Oh, oh, look out. Young's going. There's a pitch. Oh! There goes Ozzie. Swung on and missed. On his knees, Piazza hit Candiotti in the fanny. Now this is really a dandy. A pitcher's greatest fear is not getting hit by a throw, rather taking a whack at the crack of the bat. But isn't it just like a pitcher to still get the last laugh? Up the middle, kick save. Aguilera, can he make the play? Yes! As the great Mel Allen might say, man alive. How about that? For 20 years, we've brought you baseball's greatest outfield plays. In fact, this catch by Gary Maddox was our first. And now, we've picked the best of the best. Coming at you, in your face.
talking? I love twi twib notes. Okay. Well, our twib note this, this week. week in baseball. Well, we love it too, Jerry. Especially when 20 years of weather gives us such fodder for fun. Like the football frigid air of the first few frozen weeks, the flakes that give way to the monsoons of spring. And it is starting to pour. It is. And here you can see the dugout said this is the hardest rain he has ever seen in Baltimore. I think it's like Niagara Falls the way it's coming into the dugout. And of course, that is the dugout. Baseball fans rarely make waves about the weather, but players, they have a different perspective. And when the fog creeps in on those little spiked feet, it's time for baseball to beat a hasty retreat. They're gonna have uh, Bonds in a pop-up and see if they can catch it. There's a lone figure standing out in right field, and only he knows who he is. There goes one, now let's see where that is. I have no idea where it is. It was in the seats. <laughs> the heat brings out the fans, but the sun brings out the worst in guys trying to make a stand. But when you're trying to play baseball, or watch it for that matter, there's nothing quite so distracting as the wind. The kind of wind that gives the baseball a mind all its own. There's a high pop-up. The wind will take it to right. Look at that. Something tells me we're not in Pittsburgh anymore. Papers swirling onto the field, all-star ballots. Wow. Looks like a mini tornado out there. This looks like a scene out of a Humphrey Bogart movie. <laughs> well, you never know what you're going to see. But you know that it's an ill wind that's blowing pretty darn good when you can't even stay in the batter's box. Dude, I'm going to be McDowell. Grab it onto one of Cecil's legs and hold on for dear life. That gets any tougher. Guaranteed, Cecil's not going any place. <laughs> and Seiko towering pop up. This ought to be interesting. It's coming back towards first base. Fielder can't get it. This is actually maybe the first time that I recall they're going to call a game on the wind. The umpires are now, well, they're going to stop it. Well, even on a clear day, walls can be a hazard. And as we've discovered, lo, these past 20 years, if you can't beat them, well, sometimes you just gotta go through them. Oh, you could probably always go over them. But the fact is, most walls leave you no choice. That's the place to be in baseball. Hatcher may not make it alive. It's there somewhere. <laughs> How you get home is open to interpretation and improvisation. Take, for instance, Gary Pettis and his ever alert third base coach, who caught the Texas Rangers napping with the backdoor nobody's home approach. 
just one of many delightful, daring dashes. Breaking ball, grounder. Marshall lets Jeffries get it, toss the cone, he tags the bag. And they say safe. Watch the runner, he's not watching the runner. The runner scores! And Cone's still arguing! Here comes the second runner! The second runner scores! I don't believe I just saw that. I don't believe it. Well, there's another ball. It scoots over near the Phillies dugout. And this ball is going to try to, it stays on the lip. And Schmidt's going to try to come home. Oh, my goodness. I have never in my life seen that. There's two men at third. The throw of the plate is in plenty of time to get one and get two. Can you believe it? That's up the middle. Base hit. Maddox makes a turn. Here comes the throw. It's going to be close. Field, but they're going to have to hold Jelts in third goal. And now the ball gets away from O'Neill. He kicks it to Benzinger. No, I do not believe it. The absolute all-time play I may have ever seen. Now, right here, he has, after he bobbles, it hits on the heel of his glove, off the hand, off the shoulder, off the head. Watch this. Whoo! You will never, ever again see this, so take a look. Like Paul, we also get our kicks from a trip to the ballpark. But how about a trip at the ballpark? Here are 20 years of fall classics. feet and flexible fingers are both attributes of one Ozzy Smith, whose barehanded catch and throw tops our palm ball bonanza. Holy cow, what a play. Never saw that play before. Never. Off the bag, nice play, Karras. And then Sheldon was there, the ball was deflected and caught by Al Martin. <laughs> nice goal. Sliced uh, to left field, and it's another chance for Mitchell, and he makes a barehanded catch. In my entire life, I've never seen that happen. <laughs> I, I have a feeling you're not alone. You gotta be kidding me. You know, baseball is the kind of game that demands your attention. You never really know who's on your side. Like the three-man lift, where you put a gullible, unsuspecting victim in the middle and two big, strong guys on the outside who say they're gonna lift him up. The guy in the middle then gets doused. At least, that's how it's supposed to work. I've seen it a hundred times and they get better every time. And this one was kind of special because the guy that set it up was the guy that got buried. <laughs> He'd been there before, and he wanted to be in on the middle of it. He wanted to be one of the guys on the outside, and, and we, he was our main focus. We buried him. We didn't worry about the guy who was in the middle that was supposed to get the brunt of it. We worried about the guy who set it up. It was great. I was a sucker for it, not only once, but twice. <laughs> Practical jokes have always been a big part of TWIP. Like the night in Toronto, when Joe Carter and his cohorts tried to give away Derek Bell's own personal truck.
We even pulled a joke or two ourselves. Like the time we set up Kirk McCaskill, self-proclaimed ping-pong champ of the White Sox clubhouse, by interjecting a world-class ringer disguised as a member of the media. I got my money on Kurt. Take your pal. Take your pick. I'll take I'll this one. I'll take his pal. Like New York State champ or something like that? Not at all. All right, let's go. I've never been to New York. This guy, let me play. <laughs> <laughs> Former Caskill never stood a chance. I'm pretty good. Yeah, I'm one of the best in Chicago. But the cream of the crop might have been Frank Viola's public humiliation at the hands of his cutting edge teammates. Frank Viola will be going for his 20th win here if he gets that shaving cream off the top of his hat. And the funny thing was, when I was going to be in, in the top of the inning, when we, you know, I have a tendency to take my hat off and fix my hair and put the hat back on. I did it three times before I went out in the mound, and the shaving cream never came off the top of the hat. It was sort of embarrassing for Frank. He had this, you know, this dot on his head of shaving cream <laughs> and he didn't know it and just knowing Frank like we all know Frank we knew he'd laugh when he eventually found out but nobody really wanted to tell him so I got out there to start the inning and I'm walking out there to warm up and I got I look over at the umpire and he's laughing at me well, what the heck are you laughing at and he wouldn't say anything at first This is going to lead this week in baseball. The ball stuck in his glove, and that's why he ran so far at first. He couldn't get it out. And then he attempted to lob it with his glove hand, and the glove went with it. And Bradley caught them both. <laughs> Fastball tapped at the plate. It'll trickle down the third baseline. The Mariners are going to let it roll, 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 roll. Lenny Randall gets down on his hands and knees and blows on it like a curler. You don't think that'll make this week in baseball, oh, do you? Oh, I think it'll <laughs> may lead it off. It may lead it off. It lead it off. <laughs> that was one play you probably thought you'd never see again on Twib. But five years later, Kevin Seitzer tried the same thing with somewhat less successful results. Foul balls had given this week in baseball more than its share of ammunition these past two decades. For as Mike Schmidt will tell you, you just never know what you're gonna catch when you go fishing for one. Or for that matter, what might pop up. Now that is just a taste of the, the sort of involvement that Don Mattingly wants to get from fans who come to Yankee Stadium. Sometimes those fans get a little too involved. They'd be wise to leave the fine art of foul balls to the pros. Go! One, two, three, and... I think that's one of the finest catches a catcher has ever made. Fair or foul, not everyone who works at the ballpark gets the exposure the players do. So many folks toil in anonymity. The support staff, we salute you. For in truth, it is your burning desire to make sure everything goes smoothly that makes you such easy targets. Well, I'm telling you, Rick Sutcliffe, maybe stories in the paper about him being retiring, but look at he's still playing tricks on the new bad boys. 
Now, Rick Sutcliffe has sent out the youngster to find the missing key to the batter's box. <laughs> and Paul Rungy is going to send him around to all the umpires. They're in on this, and the young man is learning that maybe the key to the batter's box is an elusive thing at the major league level. They locked the keys in the bullpen guy, and as soon as he saw the camera on him, he said, how embarrassing. I don't think he realizes, the San Diego bat boy, that he has been had in the dugout. Hard shot hit foul down the first baseline. What happened? <laughs> it went in his hood. <laughs> Ball went right back. He has no him. idea where it's at. It's now a there. fan is letting him know. In there the... it is, and the fan got it. Yeah, he had it in the in the <laughs> in the back of his jacket. He didn't know where it was. <laughs> and the fan thanks him. <laughs> nice job. Some players aren't remembered so much for their sparkling career as they are for a remarkable achievement. Like, for instance, former amateur hockey goalie Jack Lazorko, whose moment in the sun is worth keeping on ice. Hit back up the middle, nice play by Lazorko. Oh, we talked about that earlier. What a cat he is on the mound. And going to try to bunt again. Lazorko, you're not going to get it by him. Two great plays by Lazorko. Right back at Lazorko, he does it again. Glove save. Boy, he looked like a hockey goalie, didn't he, going down that time? Oh, he does it again. <laughs> again, Jack Lazorko. Well, I'll tell you, don't hit anything up the middle today. Webster hits it fair down the right field line and into the corner and into the Giants bullpen through the, the fence. The door was open. <laughs> That's classic. I mean, you'll be seeing this shot for, oh, for years great. to come. The door was open. You talk about closing the barn door after the damage was done. Oh, that's a great, that's a classic. Well, over the past 20 years, we've tried to be everywhere, and we've witnessed almost everything that can happen on the baseball field, or for that matter, in the stands. More than 76,000 games have been played since this week in baseball first went on the air. And from those games, we've managed to come up with a few things that we're pretty certain we've seen only once. Glad you stepped out. McClellan apparently told him to get back in, motion for Hudson to throw the pitch, and he was called out. What a bizarre out. They want Yuppie off the Dodger dugout. He's bugging the Dodger players, and third base umpire Bob Davidson is throwing Yuppie out of the ball game. We've seen it all now, huh? I was running in. <laughs> I was really going to be honest. Okay, I'll be honest. <laughs> I was running in one time and my cup fell off, you know what I mean? The jack strap broke. <laughs> my cup's rolling down my leg. I'm trying to. <laughs> Fans looking at me like, what's wrong with this guy, you know? And I'm trying to hold my cup up till I get in the dugout. And that was embarrassing, man. There goes Gibson. Bouncing ball, hit and run. It bounces off his helmet. Gibson coming to third, and they have him in a rundown. Walker running Gibson back to second. Salazar lays on the tag. Yes, they say he got it. Can you believe that play? The ball hit Gibson's helmet as it was sneaking through the infield. Gibson can't believe it. And the fact that Kirk Gibson doesn't have a lot of hair probably aided the Cubs. <laughs> he wanted to call time on that pitch and nails it to deep left. Can you believe that? Incredible. He wanted to call timeout. He didn't get it. Swung the bat and hit out of the park. A three-run home. This. The bat, the ball, and Garcia arrive at third base at the same time. That's weird. Goes right side again. Kurt Schilling with another base hit. Biggie tries to throw back. Oh my God! It hit him right in the head. Are you kidding me? It hit Kurt Schilling right in the head. He never saw it. Thank God for batting helmets. David Cohn has just come into the back of our booth to tell me he can swing the bat. Check the stats there, Cohn. 143, that's a hard one. There, there he is right here, folks. 
Oh, it's a hard 143. I've seen a side of Chris Sabo that you don't ordinarily see, do you? He's obviously going to fly out. Another breaking ball, sky to left. And this ball is going to, it hit a bird. You hit a that. bird. I, I've never seen that. The ball hit a bird. It is a free ball. And Santana has a bird in his hand. She doesn't like it. Uh. Well, OK. Ricky Henderson also hit a bird. But it's a rare sport that can claim two birds in the hand and just one career stolen base by Cecil. Cecil's running. He struck him out, and he did it. Hey, for stolen. He did it for Cecil. Get that ball. Get that base. And he's getting a standing ovation now from this crowd. Look at it. All right. It's been a great two decades, and we've just about seen it all. But of all the bloopers that have passed our way, from bunk birds to bizarre plays, one stands out among the rest. This Week in Baseball presents the 20-year blooper, the mother of all bloopers. High fly ball, right field deep. Can Seiko back to the track? Look it up. It is off his head, it looked like. And over the top. laughing out there, so it uh, must hit something funny. It hit Canseco <laughs> in the head and bounced over the wall for a homer. Look at this. <laughs> Boink. <laughs> and it's out of here. Head and shoulders above the rest. <laughs> 20 years sure go by fast. And we owe it all to you. Hi, I'm Peter Gavir, the Texas Rangers. Catch all the major league action on this week. No, on what? This is Dan Gladden. And this is Robbie Thompson. We never <laughs> right. Catch all the action of major league baseball. No. Hi, I'm Mike Scott of the Houston Astros. Catch all the action on of this week. Hey, let me see that again. I'll never get through this. We never miss this, this week, week in, in baseball. baseball on, on this, this channel. Station. On this station or channel? Station. On this station. God, I'm having trouble with this one. Get Bert Convy for this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we never watch this week in baseball, so don't you watch it. No, it's this week in baseball. I understand you're going to watch this week in baseball. Make no bones about it. I understand it's a doggone good show. Right, Shotzi? She's supposed to go wolf, but she can't have everything. Doop, doop. Do, 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 do. Camera guy's got the ball and he's going to pick out a youngin to give it to. Good move. And the <laughs> brother's angry. <laughs> How come he gets one and I don't? That's a Norman Rockwell right there. <laughs> Got the ball. It's got the best of both worlds. <laughs> nice going, Dad. The big bully stole the ball and knocked the hot dog. I think he traded that ball right now for the hot dog he lost. And a fan with a catch up there. Dropped his son and caught the ball. Look at the crying son. How's that one? <laughs> he scared him a little bit, I think.